So what did ScienceSmart do to make a good machine great? Well, they started off by installing ball screws like these. They redesigned the Z assembly to be stronger and more efficient. Newer, more powerful stepper motors that are also closed loop. I'll explain what that means very shortly. They fitted eccentric nuts on all the carriages to allow the pressure of the wheels to be adjusted. As well as some other upgrades such as a hybrid aluminium MDF bed, taller dust guards and repositioned limit switches. This is James Dean Designs and I present to you the Prover XL V2. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that little subscribe button in the corner to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials, and of course, reviews. Now, just under three years ago, ScienceSmart released the Genmitsu Prover XL 4030, which is essentially the base machine sitting behind me. At the time, it was a bit of a big leap because nobody was bridging the gap between smaller 3018s and some larger workshop machines but it was a welcome addition to the market. And well, nearly three years on, they've released the V2 with a few upgrades. So let's take a look at those in a little bit more detail. So let's start with the ball screws, which are fitted on all three axes. And if you are not familiar with the difference between ball screw and the lead screw fitted on the older machine, well, basically the difference is a ball screw is usually more precise and has no backlash, as we can see in these demonstrations here. Any movement can return to the exact same spot, and this is measuring to hundreds of a millimeter, so it is very precise. And the accuracy of the machine straight out of the box, again, was within a couple of hundredths of a millimeter on all three axes. With a little bit of fine tuning, I got this dialed straight in, and it was running perfectly with no backlash and very precise. Now what that means in machining terms is essentially there is no slop in the axis when it's traversing back and forth and therefore just giving you more accurate and precise results in anything you are machining. Next let's talk about the Z assembly. Now on the older machine the entire Z assembly moved up and down. This is quite inefficient adding extra weight and stress to the stepper motor so it could have been improved. And what they have done now is made it so only the carriage itself with the spindle moves up and down therefore putting less stress and weight on the stepper motor and helping its precision and efficiency. And let's talk about probably the biggest upgrade on this machine, these bad boy stepper motors right here with a rating of 3.1 Newton meters. So basically they are very powerful. Here is a silly video of me actually standing on the machine itself and it moving my body weight back and forth. So not only is it more powerful, but it is also a closed loop stepper system. Now to some people watching this video, that may be a new phrase you've never heard before, because to be honest, this is one of, if not the first desktop machine to incorporate it into its build. So I'm gonna try and explain this the way that I understand it with another high-end Spielberg special effects setup. Now with an open loop system, there is no feedback going on with in it. It receives a signal, it carries it out, and it just assumes everything has gone correctly. So in this scenario here, the stepper motor is told to turn at 10 steps, it starts to go round. Let's say you're driving your bit a bit too hard, and maybe it only gets to seven steps, so it's missed some steps. Your machine has no idea that this has happened and will continue to do the rest of the job, and ultimately you'll probably have a failed job. Now, with a closed loop system, also known as a servo system, it has a way to track where the inside of the stepper motor actually is. So, same scenario again, we send the signal for 10 steps, starts to get to maybe seven steps, juttering, stuttering, can't complete it. It will continue to drive it all the way until it knows those two points within the stepper motor meet up, and then it will progress to the next command that it had. So that is basically the difference. An open loop stepper system has a much higher chance of missing steps, whereas a closed loop stepper, miss, stepper system, in theory, shouldn't have any missteps because it will continue to drive it until that job has been completed. So we have power, we have accuracy under load, and we also have speed on top of that. This has a default of 5,000 millimeters per minute. That's two and a half times faster. However, it can actually be pushed to 6,000 millimeters per minute. So it can machine or laser that fast. Just to illustrate this and what that looks like. <laughs> 
how fast is that? And that is all due to the upgrades that ScienceMart have made to this machine. Now straight out of the box, it comes with a 400 watt air cooled spindle. Combined with this frame and stepper motors, well, it can actually machine quite deep as we can see in these examples here. And this 52 millimeter holder will also take your average 44 millimeter diode laser. But in reality, as I say, with these stepper motors and this frame, you want to be upgrading to something bigger. And it also comes with the 65 millimeter holder. This will take your average trim router, such as a Makita, Bauer, Harbor Freight. And it will also take some spindle VFD setups, usually up to about 1.5 kilowatts. And if you do decide to go that big with a spindle, well, to be honest, you're pretty much going to breeze through any material. I started to do some simple testing with the 400 watt spindle, but I also knew this video would be coming out around the 4th of July, Independence Day. So as a little tribute to my American followers. This is coming in at around two to $300 more than the original base model, but obviously you get quite a lot of upgrades for that and they are well worth it. And to get an extra $100 off until the end of July, use my exclusive code JAMES100 and follow the links in the description area below. So every time I do a review, I like to do something different. And well, after moving on from the 400 watt spindle to the Makita, I decided to do this 3D relief carbon topographical map of Mount Rainer. Now I've never done the, one of these before and this was originally 85 millimeters deep. I had the finishing pass running at 4,000 millimeters per minute because I wanted to test the speed of this versus it on an endurance job and it came out absolutely brilliantly. Now some of you are going to ask how long did it take? Well the roughing pass was three hours. For some reason the finishing pass actually took nine hours versus the simulation that was only five hours. So I need to understand what the discrepancy was there because in theory, the whole job should have only taken around eight hours. And this has a tiny step over of 8% and the detail in this is brilliant. How does it fare up against metal? Well, I did some tests on aluminium and brass. I started by surfacing at the aluminium block and each time I took the depth per pass even deeper. I did get it cut in as deep as one millimeter per pass. It probably was a little bit too aggressive, but it was comfortably machining at 0.8 millimeters per pass. I did some tests facing the side of the aluminium and this was at a depth of eight millimeters per pass. And well, the results speak for itself. And finally, I switched to the brass where I surfaced off an old branding iron that I'd done the wrong way around on a previous review and took this back down to a flat bar. Now these setups are rarely designed for machining metal 100% of the time. But for the two tests that I did on the aluminium and brass, I was really impressed with the speeds that it was coping with, as well as the depth of cut and ultimately getting nice finishes on those pieces of metal. Now before people start moaning in the comments section, let's address the one upgrade that is missing from this, linear rails. I do agree they would have been a nice addition to this machine, but in reality, it would have pushed the price range probably over one and a half thousand dollars, which therefore takes it out of reach of quite a lot of people. So I do fully understand why ScienceMart have not included them in this build. And the fact that they have put the eccentric nuts now onto the wheels for the carriages means you can control the tensions and pressures in the wheels and therefore minimize any play that you would have had in the carriages and ultimately getting better results. So yes, it's sad they've not included them, but the upgrades that they have made have minimized any issues that you would have got with the older machine. And before you ask, yes, they are releasing an extension kit for this. I believe it's going to be a 6060 upgrade and will be available late summer, early autumn. And just to clarify, this is a different extension kit than the V1 extension kit. They will not interchange 
due to some of the different components on both machines. The control box has had a slight facelift with connections, buttons and functions now being in better positions. I was slightly surprised they had remained with an 8-bit controller whereas most people are now using a 32-bit. However, it's handled everything that I've thrown at it from different speeds, different size jobs. So maybe it actually goes to show that there isn't a huge amount of advantage on these machines between an 8 and a 32-bit controller. Even though the dust guards are higher on this machine, to minimise any debris going on the extrusion itself, I designed these 3D printed guards to go on top of those. And as always, the file will be given away for free in the links in the description area below the video. The work area for this is 410mm on the X, 308mm on the Y, and even though the Z-axis travels 120mm, the gap from the bed to the base of it is 100mm. The overall footprint of the machine is 760 millimeters wide, 700 deep, and 500 millimeters high. So ever since I got my Prover XL and obviously upgraded to the 6060, I have loved it and it's become my workhorse. So when Saint Smart announced the V2, well, I was curious as to what changes they were going to make. And I can genuinely say every upgrade and tweak they have made to this has improved the machine. Even upgrades I didn't know that I wanted, such as the closed loop stepper motors. I still consider myself a beginner and I'd never worked with these before, but they really do improve the way the machine runs. And I'm so thankful Science Smart have included them. So if you are looking at this machine and you can afford the price difference between the V1 and the V2, definitely go for the V2. It is well worth the cost difference. If you are considering buying them, remember that exclusive discount and also check out the links in the description area below to find all the details on it. Thank you all very much for watching. If you found it useful, as always, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Final thanks goes to my patrons. If you want to get involved for one-to-one -one help, giveaways and early access to content, then again, check out the information in the description area below. I will see you all on the next episode.